Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. All right, let's get into this SEC uh, conference preview. Um, there's a lot to get to, man. I, I love Texas a and I'm very curious you're taking Tennessee, uh, T.O., Alabama, Arkansas, I think Florida and Auburn are teams no one's talking about enough. Chris Beard at Ole Miss is a fascinating conversation depending on you know, which transfers are able to get eligible. But I think we have to start with Kentucky, T.O., the Wildcats. They're young. They have eight freshmen in a league where all of these teams average nine upperclassmen. They have two guys that are older than freshman or sophomore year. But they're talented, man. They got a lot of pieces. Some of them are injured. What do you make of the Wildcats? Yeah, they're still really talented. And I kind of like where Calipari is going, going back to where he's comfortable, getting the most talented freshmen, bringing them in, let them be them, and we'll just figure it out from there. And he's added some – not added, but he hang on, hung on to some older pieces. Antonio Reeves is a really good player. And then, uh, you know, you add Trey Mitchell, who has been a part of some winning teams – I, I I like that he's going back to freshman because I think power is going to eventually slide back to freshman after these COVID years are done. That all being said, COVID years aren't done and they're playing against 23 and 24 year olds. I still think Kentucky's a top 20 team. I think they're going to win a lot of games. And I think these guys fit what Calipari likes to do much better than what the guys over the last couple of years have been able to do. And what, what do I mean when I say that transfers were great in a system freshman you get a bunch of guys who can attack off the bounce and then his offense works so i'm excited to see i think they're going to be good i, I do i think they're national championship 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 winners uh no i don't but i do think that this is a kentucky team that wins a couple of games in a tournament i'm not ready to say that yet and i think they're a second weekend team. i think the talent's good and i think he'll hone it just enough to where they'll be fine that the talent is good. There's stars next to these guys' names. This is not an otherworldly freshman class. Mm -hmm. And let's acknowledge a couple of things here. Okay. Trey Mitchell was a quality pickup, but Trey Mitchell is on his fourth school in as many years. Right. All right. Sometimes there's a reason for that. Uh, Antonio Reeves is a good player. He's a good player. Having him back is a good thing for a team that I had a lot of concerns about with their perimeter shooting. I'm not worried about the ability of DJ Wagner and Robert Dillingham being able to coexist and figure things out. I'm more worried about who's going to be the point guard, the one, late in situations, initiating the offense, making plays for others, getting stuff done for this team and being productive and efficient and avoiding turnovers. You've got to have high-level point guard play in the SEC. Mm -hmm. And that's just it. For me, Kentucky's a good team. The reason why I'm not sitting here, the reason why I didn't rank them in the preseason is because I have far more unknowns with this team than I have knowns with them. The other reason is Aaron Bradshaw's injury while, while I think he'll, we're going to see him on the floor and play a significant role, like, do I have concerns about that? Hell yeah, I do, because for freshmen, I want to see a preseason. I want to see you have weeks, months to train with your teammates to get ready for the season. And Cal was very, very high on him. So I could go down the list of different areas that I've got concerns. I love Justin Edwards. I think he's going to be fantastic for the, for the Wildcats. I really do. I think Edwards could end up being their best player. But to me today, T.O., I'm not saying that I can't see them getting to a Sweet 16. The Part of the reason why I'm voting no on that and pushing back on that is because of the Princetons of the world, the St. Peter's of the world, combined with older teams winning in March. It's really hard to be one of the final 16 in college basketball nowadays. It's a lot harder now than it was before. And the fact is, Kentucky now competes in a league of great, not good, great coaching. Even the programs that have been bad, right? Chris Jans and Mississippi State, not a pushover. They're very, they're good. Missouri, mm -hmm. no longer a pushover. Ole Miss, no longer a pushover. You got to find wins. You don't have teaching moments 
in the SEC for your freshman. That league's a bear. Kentucky could finish sixth in that conference. Would I be surprised? Would you be surprised if they finished fifth or sixth in their own league? Fourth, fifth, them, or sixth? I picked them sixth in the Almanac. And, and I'll, I'll say this. I think in an ideal world, you would see a year that is similar to what Duke did last season, right? They took some lumps early. They figured things out around January and February. They got things going towards March, and they were a five seed that everybody thought had a chance to make a real run uh, in the NCAA tournament, and they just ran into a Tennessee team that was too big and too physical and too tough for them. Um, I think that that could be similar to what Kentucky season could be, but that's pending a couple things. One, you got to get like one of Aaron Bradshaw, you got to Unyeso or Big Z uh, to the point that they can play, right? Mm. Or two... John Calipari's got to figure out a way that he can be effective playing small ball with multiple handlers, a foreman that's going to be a stretch guy, maybe even Trey Mitchell at the five, right? And I don't know if those two things will necessarily happen. Here's the other. Big Z is good. Yeah, he's good. Is he going to play? Is he yeah. going to be eligible? Like there's there's real concerns about whether or not that will happen. My guess is that he probably will, and they'll just ding him a couple games. But I think that they, that's another question. It's just a question mark that you have, right? Yeah. Um, here's here's my other concern. With Duke last season, when they took their lumps early, there was not enough of a culture. There was enough leadership in that locker room that they did not fragment, and they stayed together, and they kept pushing. And Derek Lively understood why he was coming off the bench and averaging five points a game. And Derek Whitehead understood, like, okay, I was the number one player in the class, but I'm going to come in here, and I'm not necessarily going to be the number one player on this roster, right? They were able to kind of stay together instead of falling apart when they took some of their losses. Do you trust John Calipari to be able to keep that roster of guys together? I think it's going to be a little bit more difficult. So um, if everything comes together, like I can see this team getting to a final four. They are, they have the talent and the ability to be able to do it. If everyone stays healthy, if big Z gets eligible and they're able to make it through a rough uh, November and December. I can but see I, it too. I can, I can see also see them like not making the NCAA tournament because they just can't get the injuries right. Cal can't figure out how to play small modern basketball and the freshmen look like freshmen the whole year. Like it just the the range of outcomes is just so wide with this Kentucky team that literally anything can happen. I would not be surprised. And, and they hired John Welch to help with the offense and the design of it and all of that. My, my thing with that is, don't you think that they would have done something before the, now to realize that they had to make a change and maybe Cal's stubbornness is a thing. I mean, not maybe it is, it is a thing and he wants to prove a point with how he plays. Look, the personnel aligned, Terrence, you brought this up that he got back to where he's been most successful. Does the personnel align for them to be successful if all the pieces come into place? Yes. It's not a revelation though, that Kentucky has talent. I mean, come on. They've had talent for years. They've had talent for years. The, 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 yep. the, the antithesis of Kenny Payne's quote. Okay, they, they can out talent you on any given night. To me, you know, the intricacies within the sport and the ability to win close games and the ability to grind it out are things that you cannot quantify in any stat sheet or in any analytics program. So I, I just, guys, every year we've been saying this for the last four or five years about what they can be or what they might be. And I'm on the other side of it. And a lot of kids, a big, big blue nation hates me. I know that they hate me. I <laughs> I see it all. You've been tweeting and texting and everything in between direct messaging for the last month and change. And they think we hate them for the 70,000th time. We all want, if Kentucky's good, it's good for everybody. It's good for you, BBN. It's good for us. We want to talk about a winning Kentucky team. But you've got to prove something to me first. I'm not falling for the brand name. Again, not with the amount of unknowns. And don't tell me that the experienced returnees are going to be great, great players this year that will have great seasons. The All-American on this team is Justin Edwards, if there is one. Outside of that, like they're talented, but do they have top 10 talent in the country on paper? I think a lot of people think that they do because of the freshman class. This freshman class in general is not outstanding. Yeah, you're not. I mean, you're not wrong. It just it it is what it is. It's going to depend on 
I'm how a well they can stick together and how well they can. Hater. All right. Let's move on. Uh, Sip it on that blueberry haterade. I'm on. a hater. And I, but, but part of it, too, is, is that when you move on here, the teams at the top of this league are old and freaking good. Yeah. Well, let's, let's, so let's talk about that. Who? So I, I think that Texas A&M is the best team in this conference. I would I pick them to win it. Uh, I would have them be the highest ranked team in this conference if, if I was doing a uh, a top 25. I, look, Wade Taylor is an absolute stud. Buzz Williams, if you look at what he's done in his past. He always has good point Tech, guards. Always yeah, has good, always point, good guards. point guards. And they just got the build of a tough, physical Buzz Williams team. Tyrese Radford screams Bud Wills, uh, Buzz Williams. Manny Obasecki screams Buzz Williams. They can play Henry Coleman and Julius Marble together. Floor spacing be damned. The two kids that they brought in, the uh, Eli Lawrence and Jace Carter, are scores that just fit uh, what he wants if he wants to be able to play a more uh, spaced Agreed. outline. I just, they're old, they're tough, they're physical. They're not going to play a single guy in their rotation that is uh, an underclassman. They're very, very, very good, T.O. Yeah, they are. And they, uh, to go along, they just fit him so well. He has a certain type of dude. And every one of them fit it to a T. I, mm-hmm. I I like the the roster construction for him. I think Henry Coleman, who was at Duke to start his career, uh, great young man for for all intents and purposes. Everything I've heard about him, but he he just fits what Buzz likes. They're tough. They they have some scoring, and if he has an elite point guard, he makes it easier on everybody else. And Buzz does a terrific job of putting those guys in spots. So. Um, I, I've told this story a billion times, but you know, whenever he was at Virginia Tech and you got to see them up close, they could be getting beat by 15, and those guys are still sprinting to spots even when you're running the clock out. Like he his his toughness with his team, the kind of kids that he recruits. Uh, I, I don't think they win the league, but I do think that they'll be up towards the top. All right, it's time to talk about Vaulted. Vaulted is an app that allows you to participate in daily cash prize pools without an entry fee. It's the place to store your own bowl predictions forever. And by using the Vaulted Challenge feature, you can prove you're smarter than your friends. So go download the Vaulted app. Give it a try for free. Vaulted is spelled V-L-T-E-D. And it is the app to challenge your friends, store your predictions, and join daily cash prize pools without any entry fee. Download Vaulted today. John, you were talking about this a little bit before the show started. You love Arkansas. I don't think Arkansas is winning the SEC this year. You think Arkansas can win the SEC this year. I'm putting five units on it, man. Why do you accept my challenge that Arkansas will not win the SEC? I say let's make it 10. Let's make it 20. I mean, I I think uh, this Arkansas team is supremely undervalued, man. Uh, I think they – we never really got a chance to see them uh, at full strength last year before Trayvon Brazil went down. And, of course, they were uh, young, but they go out in the transfer portal. They add Khalif Battle, who I think is going to be a really good player in the SEC. Uh, obviously, Chandler Lawson in the transfer portal uh, and bringing back Trayvon Brazil for that sophomore season. I love this team. I think they're going to have the length, the athleticism. I think in terms of the rest of the SEC, well, we're, we're going to go crazy on Tennessee because they finally have a player that can dunk. I mean, what are we doing here? I think there's a lot of teams in the SEC that I don't buy, Kentucky being one of them, too young. It's not the way you win in college basketball anymore. So I like Musselman. I think they're in a great position here with what they're bringing back and adding, getting older, getting better. Give me the Razorbacks, baby. Let's go. woo pig. Challenge accepted. I like Arkansas to win the league, and I'm not saying that because they beat Purdue in an exhibition game. However... Uh, I like the combination of depth with balance in that I don't think that they're going to have to rely on any one guy to be great on a given night to win a lot of games. You're talking about Arkansas or Texas A&M? I'm talking about Arkansas. Okay. I mean, Arkansas is going to have – they can ride Trayvon Brazil. They they could ride L. Ellis for a little bit. Devo Davis – had two points in the exhibition win over Purdue, and Arkansas scored 81 in the game. Tremont Mark is one tough you-know-what, and they were able to pick him up. I mean, Mark, that was a great transfer pickup, a guy who understands tenacity, the toughness factor, the defensive ability that you've got to have. You know, Muss and, and Kelvin Sampson are cut from the same cloth with how hard their teams play, 
And that was a, a great pickup there of Tremont Mark. Caleb Battle, being able to bring him in off the bench, and he's a guy who could go get you 15 points on a given night. Uh, this this team, and Chandler Lawson, who I, I really like the upside there. I like the way that he plays. I just think that Arkansas, we do not talk about them. If, if you're talking about how all the pieces have been built up with A&M, Arkansas has a great mix of returning talent, right? Brazil and and Davis, they hit. They're always going to hit it big in the transfer portal. And before the mid nineteen nineties, before twenty twenty one, they hadn't been in the second weekend of the tournament since the mid nineties, mm -hmm. right? They've gone to the second weekend three consecutive years, and have made the elite eight twice. So to me. I'm not betting against what has been – We when people are saying that that's a past, it doesn't matter, John. It does matter. Clearly, there's something formulaic here for the Razorbacks that allows them to have success when they get to the most important time of year. They're going to out-tough you. They're, gonna, they're just going to outdo you when they get on the floor at the most critical time of year, and they did against Kansas last year. So I like you know, the you know what it is? Team. I'm take I'm taking the Hogs to win the SEC. You know what it is, and I, I don't I actually don't hate that pick because I think that the the top of the conference is um, there's a lot of really really good teams. But the silly, thing I love about them silly good conference, silly yeah, it's, good it's so like there's legitimately eleven teams that I that you could talk me into having a chance 11. to make the NCAA tournament this year. It, it's pro it'll probably be like eight, but there, I think there's eleven teams where you head into the season depending on how things shake out that have a chance to actually get there. Um, the thing I love about Arkansas this year is, one, uh, they're going to be very, very big, especially in the backcourt, and very, very versatile. Like, you're looking at Devo Davis as a potential point guard on this team, as the guy who's going to have the ball in his hands. He's six foot four and, and one of the best defenders in the SEC. You're looking at Khalif Battle, who I think by the end of the year will be the guy that must kind of isolates and says, okay, you're my bucket getter. You're the guy we're going to create mismatches with. Um, Trevon Brazil is going to be a monster when he's back this year. Tremont Mark is the perfect kind of toughness, uh, six, six physical defender that can score that, that, uh, that must loves. Um, I, I just, I really like the way that this group has been put together. Um, but with Muslim and teams, like it all kind of hinges on how long it takes me to figure out what he's got. Right. T.O. Yeah. Look, Muss is going to be good, but we haven't even talked about Alabama. Aaron Estrada goes there. Grant Nelson goes there. Latrell Reitzel goes there. Like, they've got dudes. And then you go down. Auburn is going to have the freshman of the year in the league in Aiden Holloway mm -hmm. because he's just going to create whatever, and Bruce Pearl's really high on him. And whenever he's high on a guard going into a year, it's usually a good thing. So Aiden Holloway can really score. And you want to talk about the perfect system fit for somebody like that? They're going to be tough. He's Jared uh, Harper 2.0. My question is going to be how long it takes him to. He's better and he's college. bigger. He's better and he's bigger. He's, that's, he's that's, also a freshman. Jared Harper was a junior when he was the, when, when they made the final four, but I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Sorry. Yeah. Keep he's, going. he's better and bigger. Uh, Florida's the one that's, I'm a little, I, I kind of want to like him, but then I, you know, is it really going to be a thing? Will Richard played really well in their exhibition. Um, I love the Micah Handlock. Then he was on the team with Julian Phillips that I coached uh, a few years ago. Like long, can block shots, can board. They've got a lot of really good players. Georgia will be better. Georgia's recruiting at a high level. I don't know if you guys have woken up to that yet, but Georgia's recruiting at a high level. Yeah. Here's here, here's your hot take. Here's your hot take. Ole Miss will finish in the top three of that league. It, Nobody's talking about this team from Oxford. Oh, it's all on. going to depend. Like I'm I'm with you on Ole Miss. If they get good news on Brandon Murray and if they get good news on Musa Cisse. Like that's 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 my only thing. Give me Ole Miss, top three. Top three. And Beard hightails it out to Louisville next year. Well, I mean, look, Fanta, Fanta, think about it like this. All right. Matthew Morrell is good enough to be, and I'm I'm with trust me to you. I am with you on this. Matthew Morrell is good enough to be a first team all SEC guy. Brandon Murray is a stud. Uh, that yes. will be a secondary piece on this group. Jamin Brakefield is that kind of like stretchish four, skilled four, that playmaking four that uh, that that Beard loves. Musa Cisse and Jamirian Sharp are the two guys I think are going to have to. They're the find two a way best to shot blockers in college basketball. Yes. Yeah. Um, 
And then I love look, Sharp. We haven't even talked about Alan Flanagan, dude. Like Alan Flanagan, who was really good, what two, three years ago? And then he tore his Achilles, and then he didn't have a chance to get fully healthy last year at Auburn. And now I guess he is healthy. Like Matthew Morrell, Brandon Murray, Alan Flanagan, Jamin Breakfield. Like that is as good of a two through four as you're going to find anywhere in college basketball. But again, like it's all. It, it, it's who's going to get eligible. Like Brandon Murray and Musa CC are still waiting for their second transfer um, waivers to come through. And we haven't seen like those things come through at a very high clip. And that changes what the calculus is for me. So but Vanna is mind blown. How long can we just sit here and talk and have Vanna be mind Tennessee blown wins. on camera? No, I, I, <laughs> I hate, I think it is wrong. Whether the player's waiver gets accepted or denied. The waiting game is ridiculous. Yes. Yes. If you want to deny the waiver, I can. You, you're not going to have to reason with me. I'm not going to get all worked up into a shoot over that. But I, I am going to get upset. It, it, with. I hate when it's opening day next week, and we're wondering if someone's going to be able to play because of a waiver. Yeah, it's crazy. This is like, <laughs> what is this, a field trip permission slip for the kid to go to the zoo? I mean, geez, yeah. oh man, we Are gotta. Be... I'm yeah. sorry, my mind is blown with that. I hate that we're. You... What about the other guys in the locker room? Okay, you know your role's going to change if Musa Cisse is playing, um, you... or if or if uh, Brandon Murray's playing. Hundred percent. So I hate it. I really that my mind's blown there. I, just, I hate it too. If you know Ole who... Miss finishes in the top three, remember, guys, somebody's going to have to finish eighth. Mm -hmm. Yep. You ready? Are you ready to hear my pick for regular season champs in the SEC? Yeah, I know you're going to pick because you're getting the song cued. We can't hear it, which is good. But oh. this is not going to get claimed on uh, claimed on YouTube. Still can't hear it. Damn it! Just sing I it. Thought I was going to have it. Sing it. I, I can give you a thumbs up. I can't play a song over the speakers. Just sing, just sing it for us. Sing it for us. I wish that I were on old Rocky Top. Down in the Tennessee Hills. We're ready. I think Tennessee's <laughs> going to win it. And here's the thing. They look good against Michigan State, but uh, they're. I'm going to say this nicely. Their problems didn't play. Their problems didn't play, so it allowed other guys to get going. Vescovy and Ziegler didn't play. If problems, Elaborate on that. Like, why, why are you worried about them? Because that's – because you think, saw their offensive potential without those two guys on the floor, and Barnes loves those guys so much. Like he loves them so much, he won't let he won't <laughs> put them off the, off the floor. He loves them so much. Is it that he loves them so much, or that this was an exhibition game that he was mic'd up in during, and the guys were playing, and and they were looser, whereas sometimes Barnes coach teams are so set in what they do that it becomes something that goes against them. Yep. No, I don't, I don't know. I I just feel like he he just trusts Vescovy so much. Don't you feel yeah. like their offense at times is just two square peg round hole? Whereas exactly. They have, and, and he tries player. to slow it down. And, and there's there's a, a there's some credence to where it's like, hey, your offense, offensive pace has to match what you're trying to do defensively. There's 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 validity there. That being said, I mean I think they've got some shot makers this year. Jordan Gaines is a shot maker. He was at USC Upstate. He shot like stupid percentages. I, I understand the big the south. Stud, dude. Dalton Connect can play. Dalton Connect can go. That that dunk is not a surprise for anybody who watched any film whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Like that dunk was not a surprise. But, but, he is a pro. And you know who else the guys we, we haven't really talked about him at all. Freddie Freddie De Leon. That kid is like fine. Bucket. Yeah, no, but he's he's, like, he's a bucket. We saw him. We saw him at Rock Hill two years ago, To, and he had he was one of those kids that enrolled in the middle of the semester, right? And then redshirted. Yeah. yeah. So he's had he's had some time. I'm I like the call. You know what I want to see? I don't know if it'll ever happen. Do you think we'll ever get lineups where you got the four uh four perimeter guys, Zakai, Santi, Dalton Connect, and Jordan Ganey with uh with JJJ at the five? Can hope we get so. some of that? I, I hope, hope so. I can get some of that. That would lead them to being able to to win games offensively. I mean that that lineup makes a lot of sense. Here's the other thing: not only was he good offensively, but did you see how disruptive Jordan Ganey was on Sunday in the passing lanes? Long. He had a couple, and and that's not those are not okay guards. Like Michigan mm -hmm. State, 
they got big time guards. Okay. Mm-hmm. Tyson Walker is going to be all American to me. Do, you know where it is, Terrence and Rob, the reason why Barnes is putting those guys on the floor. When you talk problems, Barnes looks at the box score and sees 20 Tennessee turnovers. You know that they turn the ball over 20 times against a Michigan state team that, that pressed them and, and, and cause problems like they can. But that's the thing. I think that that just eats at Barnes, the thought of turning the ball over 20 times exhibition or regular season game. Yep. Yep. All right. So I, I want to make ping- me want to like it. Doesn't make me like it. <laughs> I want to ping a couple questions at you and see what you guys have to say. All right. Al- Alabama or Auburn? Who finishes higher? Alabama. Alabama. I'm going Alabama there. Aaron Estrada, I've heard is crushing it and he's going to have a monster year might not have a drop off from averaging 20 points a game might did stay at see, that same number did you see nate oates quote what no. he said no. he said it basically said uh it's nice to have a point guard that you can trust to compete every single day in practice and you don't have to to uh to to try to motivate a direct dig at uh jelly fam jq let me tell you something about estrada if the game is late and they, and they need a shot. That kid's going to at least hit two to three this year. He is a killer late yeah. in games. And, and and the fact that, like, I was concerned about him going into Alabama physically, being able to handle everything. But the fact that he could play alongside Mark Sears, mm-hmm. who's a stabilizer. And, and the reason why you pick, for me, I mean, it's it's Grant Nelson uh, and, and acquiring him in the portal. When they got Nelson... That entered them into the conversation of they're, they're, they're a better team than Auburn. There's still a couple too many unknowns with Auburn on the perimeter than there are with Alabama. I love Janai Broom, but I'm I'm asking fewer questions with Bam. I like the tie. All right, so I'm gonna. I think I tend to agree that Alabama is better. I'm going to make the argument for Auburn here, though. They already have what I think you could argue is the best front court. And the SEC, especially if we're going to assume that Tolo Smith is going to be out until uh, mid-January, right? Janai Broom, really, really good at the five. Jalen Williams, I think, is uh, a guy that is very underrated as a grad, uh, as a fifth-year guy at the four spot. You're bringing in Chad baker Mazar, who has already played at a high level, six-foot-seven wing, really, really can shoot it. And I think that the upgrade that you make in the backcourt with Aiden Holloway and Denver Jones over Katie Johnson, who is now – probably in his better role as the sixth man. And uh, with uh, I, I'm blanking on the point guard from last year that we crushed the entire season. But the the upgrade that you made in the backcourt, so you went from having a great front court and guards that will lose games for you to having a great front court and guards that, in theory, will have a chance to win games for you that fit what Bruce Pearl wants to do better. So um, yeah. I, I don't – I think Alabama probably is better on paper. I think both of them have a very real chance to finish top four in the league. And uh, yeah. I'll tell you this, I cannot wait for those uh, rivalry games. It's going to be a lot hey, of fun. Sneaky pickup by Auburn. Uh, Chaney Johnson transferring from D- D2, yes. Alabama Huntsville. Uh, grew, it was Entered college at 6'2". And he's now 6'7". Like, nice yeah, player. They, what are yeah, you laughing really at, Fanta? Well, we we got nine teams that could finish in the top four. That's yeah, why the SEC is so good. It's a, it's I know, a, no, it's a I know, I know. The league. Yeah. All right. Next one for you. I know. I'm just laughing at it. It's Mississippi yeah. State or Missouri. That's a hard question. I'm going to say Missouri. I'm going to say Missouri too because Tolu Smith's out until God knows when. Yeah, and I, Nick Honor to me is is such a steady presence for them. I, I yeah. think when you when you look at they're old. I mean that's the one yeah. thing about Missouri. They're just old. Top they're starting to five fifth years this year. Five grad students in your starting lineup. And, and you know, the, the ability for Nick Honor and Sean East to play alongside each other. I, I thought Caleb Grill was a really nice Good addition. I mean, we, we watched Grill at the PK-85 last year help Iowa State turn heads. So, yeah. you know, that that to me is he's a 3 and D guy who, who understands what it takes to get it done on both ends of the floor. I mean, you know, the front court, right? Like they're going to rely on this Connor Vanover, a seven foot five center. Um, Shoots threes. What what exactly does he present in the SEC coming over from Oral Roberts? But I like this team. Fun fact on Connor Vanover he had more block shots himself last season for Oral Roberts than Missouri did as a team last season. 
Missouri also finished last season ranked 362nd out of 363 mm-hmm. teams in defensive rebounding percentage. So uh, I don't think that's going to get better. Wow. The best rebounder in uh, in Kobe Brown. Yeah, it's just Dennis Gates just didn't didn't care about it. Like I talked to him about it in the offseason. He was like, what would you rather win, the rebounding battle or 25 games? I was like, eh, all right. Fair enough. <laughs> That's the way I wonder why they it. would get. I wonder why it was so bad. Were they so top heavy? Like, what was? I wonder. Yeah, sorry. I, I think it's just the that. the zone that they played was not something that focused and prioritized getting offensive rebounds. I will say this though: one of the more underrated transfer classes in college basketball. Caleb Grill, yeah. really good role player. John Tanji, really good player. Connor Vanover fits a role: five man block shot, spaces the floor. Tamar Bates from Indiana has got a chance to be really good, and Kurt Lewis. Uh, was the Juco player of the year last year that I think is going to come in to be effective. My question is if they have like a dude, a stud, who is mm-hmm. going to go out there and do what Kobe Brown did. Um, as far as Mississippi State is concerned, veterans love the backcourt. Um, I think the combination of DJ Jeffries and Cam Matthews at the 3-4 spot is really dangerous. I like what they brought in in terms of um, Andrew Taylor, the kid from Marshall, Josh Hubbard, a freshman that scored 4,000 po- points in high school Good coming player. in. Good player. Uh, and they got player. a kid named Trey Fort that is a JUCO transfer that shot like 40 something percent from three in two years at JUCO. So I think Chris Jans went out there. They were the worst three point t- shooting team in college basketball last season, 363rd. Uh, and they went out and they added some shooters, but none of that's going to matter if you're 15 no, no. and 10. Drew Timmy of the SEC is not going to be able to be available. Um, last thing I got for you guys uh, Florida. For the Almanac, we had them as a team ranked in the preseason top 25. The AP poll, they had exactly two votes. So out of the 64 people that vote in the AP poll, only two other people had them in the top 25, and both of them had them 25th. Who's going to be right? Who's going? Who's who's more likely to be right? The people that have them ranked in the top 25 or the people like (laughs) Florida? The other side not being in the top 25 has a better shot of, of being correct in my opinion. And, and part of that is just like, could Florida spend some time in the top 25 this year? Of course. I mean, UConn wasn't ranked in the preseason top 25 last year and they won the national championship. The preseason top 25 is what it is a total crap shoot. But I think that this is an NCAA tournament team that could very well be in an eight, nine game. Like that's kind of what I see from the Gators this year. You know, Riley Kugel, as the Almanac says, is on every breakout player list in the country. And and Walter Clayton, you know, Rick Pitino said it, I could really use Walter Clayton right now. He's a really good player who understands how to play the game on both ends of the floor and averaged 17 points per game for an Iona program that went to the NCAA tournament. Will Richard, we're all Will Richard fans here. To me, um, you know, I'll be, I'll be quite candid here. I need to see Tyree Samuel. He's a good player with upside. Now the upside's got to translate to consistency every single game. It cannot be every three or four games. Tyrese has it in him to be a great player. Yes. But he, you, you, you have to go out and do it. Sounds like a Seton Hall fan venting a little frustration right there. <laughs> just just saying. I mean, it, it, There's a, there was a lot of talent on that Seton Hall team last year. Yeah, mm-hmm. Right. But but talent, talent of talent inherited. Versus talent acquired is a big difference because when you're a coach and you inherit, it's your job as a coach to get the best out of the guys that you've got. And Samuel's very talented, but you know, deep layer here, you you he's getting paid a lot of money in Florida to play. Mm-hmm. He's got to produce the results. Yep. Tio, you got any takes? No, I mean the Kugel Richard wing matchup is going to be tough for anybody to guard those are two guys that can really score it and will richard was good uh you, you know he was really he was okay last year i think this year he's gotten comfortable in that system what i will say when it comes to the people at the almanac all of those guys that you have working on the almanac are all really good they are really statistically based thinkers uh-oh so <laughs> as is as is todd golden so there, there are going to be some like thinking there when it comes to picking up your thing. So they they still got to put it together. That's the big that's the big issue. I you're would anti math, huh? You're an anti. I'm not. An, I, I'm. No, I'm, you're I'm, an asshole. I am an asshole. I am an <laughs> asshole. I, I think 
<laughs> I've always been a flow guy as opposed to that, as opposed to like directly looking at things. I like to see how a team plays together. Uh, on paper, it makes a lot of sense. Everybody they put on that roster, everything makes sense statistically. It's just a matter of putting the pieces together and having them play well. I, I thought Florida underachieved last year for what a lot of us thought was going to happen. And now uh, they have a roster full of guys that – It's time for while, Todd Golden to prove it. Like prove prove you're the golden boy, right? He's yeah, got, what does he's that got mean? the pieces here. He's what got, does that I, mean this season? I think that he has a team that is good enough – to be uh, like a top six seed in the tournament. I think he has a team that is good enough yeah. to be a top 25 team. But you're betting on Micah Handligan um, making the adjustment to the higher level. Walter Clayton will. making the adjustment to the higher level. Riley Kugel being the guy that he was the last 10 games of last season and not the guy that he was the first 25. Will Richard being the guy that we thought he was when he transferred in from Belmont and not the guy that he was for most of last season. Tyree Samuel being more than what we've seen him be for four years, right? Like you're betting on a lot of things being uh, one of the better case scenarios, but it's not, uh, there's not always a guarantee. that they didn't, they didn't have a winning season last year. I yeah. know there's a lot of turnover, but like there's talent there for sure. It's just a matter of putting it all together. Yep, for sure. Listen, uh, this has been oh, fun. Oh, 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 oh. Did you read the chat? I did not read the chat. What do you got? Okay, so I have one question before the season starts. Okay. Not not a funny question, uh, a real question. We've done all these conference previews, and it gets me thinking because you're like, you're talking about Florida and their potential. You're talking about Auburn and their potential. You're talking about Alabama. Like, there's no question. The SEC is the conference of upside where it just means more. We've done all these conference previews. Let's settle the debate. That's such a good, how, that's such a good way to describe the SEC. How would you how would you rank? Give me your top five conferences in this sport this year. Um, I will go go six. Go yeah, we gotta go okay. through all the big ones. We'll we'll rank them. Um, I'm gonna say that the Big 12 will be the best league in college basketball this year, slightly edging out the Big East. Um, I think that the SEC is uh is a close third, a third, but a close third. Um, I would have uh the Big Ten slotted in fourth, slightly above the ACC. Oh, um, and then I would have the Mountain West coming in at number six. Oh, you've really killed off the Pac-12. I think the Mount. I think the top five in the Mountain West is really good. Is can't really, wait, really good. Mountain West, baby. I'm, yeah. I'm flying out. I'm flying Phantom. out. <laughs> Fanta, like I, I think this is a year where we could legitimately see five teams from the Mountain West get a bid. Like I don't think that that yeah. is a a hot. Like that, that. It's a little bit of a hot take, but it's not a scalding take. It's like a, it's like a, you know, it's like you left your coffee out for ten minutes and you if, come back to sip it. Take well, your the, the the way that the rationale works there perfectly. It would be like what was it, twenty fourteen, the Atlantic Ten, when they when they were mm -hmm. able to collect all those bids. You have to sit there and say, okay, after the top two in the Big Ten, is the middle of the Big Ten a little bit more bubbly than it has been because of the unknowns in that league? Like the past couple of years, all the Big Ten's done is eaten up bids. They've eaten up nine bids. They could do it again. Mm -hmm. But I think that that's all. Like, if a Mountain West gets five, does the Big Ten have two fewer? Does the yeah. SEC have one fewer? Do, you know, does it? But is the ACC fifth? No, you know what? Now fifth, that I think about Terrence? it, I would, I would slot no. them fourth. I would have them above the Big Ten now that I, I'm I'm thinking about the what I just said. And I would probably have them above the Big Ten. But, yeah, sorry. Go ahead, T.O. Big 12 first. Guys, I, I'm sitting here looking at the SEC is good. ACC, I, I would probably go ACC second just because. Oh my of the top. God! Wow! No way! Are the you top, kidding me? T.O. 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 No time out. No give, the me top. give me a twenty second T.O. The top. Give me a T.O. Baby. The top. No way. The top is good. It, 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 guys, they've made a Final Four each of the last how many years? The Big East has three of the top eight. ACC second. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> Are you kidding? A few moments later, you you cannot put the ACC. I think the ACC has potentially ten teams that could make the tournament. <laughs> no, you do not believe. I it. do think that. 
Uh, All right, so here's here's now that I'm thinking about it, that that's kind of a hard one just to throw on there. I think the bottom of the Big East isn't great. The bottom three is a walk through. There's not enough teams. Seton Hall, me, uh, St. John's, we'll see. Villanova, I'm still waiting to see. I think that's a conference of potential. They have Providence. You know, we'll see. I I think I understand we're three of the top eleven or whatever. Top three. Eight. Top yeah, top top three is exceptionally good. After that, where's the depth come in? That's the reason I'm moving them down. I'm moving them down, Fanta. How about that? Uh, so I'm going Big Twelve. The only th- the the thing that gets me every year is the freaking Big Ten because they just continue to not prove it. They just continue yeah, but- to prove me right over the past few years. So it's like I want to put them up there because that there's a lot of it's- depth in that league. So, so, all right. So here we go. Big 12, ACC, SEC, Big 10. Oh. No, Big East after the SEC. Oh, this rankings are, these are. So yeah. fourth, fourth. Pac 12 is six. Pac 12 is six. Pac 12 is six. SEC, ACC is going to be good this year. Big 12, ACC, SEC, Big East, Big 10, Pac 12. You're welcome. Okay. We'll see. Let the game speak. Thank you for watching the Field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, hit that like button, share this link with your friends, or check out the description for some other places that you can consume Field of 68 content.